means that that can be the spaces that are the projects. Okay, contacts, yeah. issues, discovering yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. It could be in the project program. To organize. Talk to me. Okay, to organize. So, you know, like what do you mean by that? You're trying to build a group? You're trying to, what are you trying to build? Okay. So all of these are partners. We're going to be looking. Oh, this one doesn't work. No, no. Ah, look at that. We're finding issues. We're organizing. Collective, you know, power. What else? Are we trying to build an organization? So how do you how do you determine where you do it? Let's say all of these things are true. How do you determine where to go? When you come in to work on a Monday, how do you know where you'll be door knocking that week, this month? Gabby. Oh, yeah. Well, it goes back to, I mean, I guess the issues, right? If there's a community that's facing uh, particular problems, um, it's most likely that person is one person of many in that community. So talk to me about the current structure. So when I describe ACORN, we built 600 plus community organizations here in the U.S. So what we were doing when we were door knocking is running an organizing drive over a six to eight week period to build a local organization in that area. And that's what people were joining was their local ACORN group in Baltimore or Norfolk or wherever. It's building that local community organization. So when you're door knocking, what is the structure? Is there a county-wide organization in Baltimore or coming together in Casa Action Baltimore or what a, is there a meeting on a monthly what a, what are we what's the structure? What's help me here? Help. <laughs> So each organizer is divided geographically, and they own a church. So like Gabby said, she's a Northwest organizer for Baltimore. So, you know, monthly or bi-weekly, we're having committee meetings. And in those committee meetings, we are discussing our fights on the local level, for in Gabby's case, in Northwest. On the state level, what are we fighting in Annapolis? And on the national level, what are we fighting for federally? And that was the structure of those committees. And that's a, so that would be the structure of what folks are discussing in those committees. And how big is the committee? Who's on that yeah. committee? So the committee is, to be a committee for CASA, it has to be at least 30 active members that either meet or take action uh, once a month. And in each committee, each organizer has at least one committee or a committee and a subcommittee. And in those committees, there are two uh, leadership council members, <laughs> and there are there are two leadership council members and one C4 Casa in Action board member that are elected by the committee, and the Consejo Liderazgo and the C board uh, board member are the ones that make the decisions for Casa on a state level and on the federal level. And on the local level, the committee itself does a general assembly twice a year that makes decisions as to what campaigns we'll be working on in the local level. Okay, so when I'm going out to my piece of turf in Northwest Baltimore or wherever, am I trying to recruit new members of the committee or just members to follow the committee's action? 
Both. So I'm both trying to identify leaders. Once again, remember the first question I asked is why we're door knocking. So one of the reasons we're door knocking now is to identify leaders in the community for our organization. Yeah. That's when you, you have already committees. If you don't have committees, then you go smaller to the group, so the, or the subgroup that, in our case, uh, Virginia, most of the time in Virginia, except Fairfax and maybe Prince Williams, but we don't have a committee yet. So we are uh, uh, recruiting and or going door knocking to bring people to our subgroups. And then eventually, you know, our goal is to form a committee. So that's a uh, She's already a lot ahead of me. So. And what's the benchmark you're looking for in Prince William or? In Prince William, we are we are right now uh, working by cities. We have one organizer for the whole county, and we have big cities around. So we are uh, at least uh, talking about three or four cities in the country that we will start a subgroup. Then when, when when we have that, we can join, we can start the committee. And the goal for the committee is... No, the committee will be for the whole county of Prince William. But the subcommittee, the subcommittee is for the... Uh, the uh, I call the committee is for the whole county and coin groups. So I'm very confused. The groups, the subgroups are, are for the cities. So how many members, what would be the benchmark to determine that now is the time to create a committee? When we have at least 20 people in each group. Well, group, not committee. Yeah. When we have 20, 20 people in each group, then we can form the committee of Prince William. And, and you know, how many groups are you trying to build? Four in Prince William. And where did the number four come from? Okay. Just because bigger cities with bigger population. So there'd be a group in each city mm -hmm. that would combine into the into the community. community. So, so why am I asking all these questions? No, no, that's a question. <laughs> oh. Why? Try to, this structure. Why? Yeah. Who said structure? Okay. And why is that important? Because without the structure, we don't have a solid base for the organization. Right. Form determines function in organizing. Structure is critically important. And unless that structure is organic in terms of how people think about it and work, structure can kill the organization right in the beginning. So unless everybody's clear, Exactly when you before you walk out of your office or house or whatever you are to go on your trip, exactly what you're trying to build, you're not able to describe that vision to people. So in some ways we almost need just you know free advice, which is you know what it's worth. We almost need a clearer way to describe what we're doing here. Because we're not just trying to make contacts. We're not just trying to listen to issues. We're organizers. We're trying to build an organization that will have power, as you argue. And we need to give people that vision. And how does this fit into what I'm saying is the structure of a, of a home visit or door knock? And I'll tell you the answer to that. There are four key elements in every home visit. And the first is obviously the introduction. Right? So right now, how do you introduce yourself when you hit the doors? By my name? Yeah. Um, saying my name, uh, where I'm from. I think the one... Rap to me. Huh? Rap to me. Talk oh. to me. Hi, hello, how you doing? Uh, my name is Eduardo Salaya, I'm from El Salvador. Uh, I moved to the United States. El Salvador, the name of your organization? El Salvador is from the country that I'm from. Why are you telling me that right because now? Because to me, one of the most important things where you're like going face to face with your community that you're representing, you want to make sure that you make them feel like you're one of them. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about that, right. but, so, but when do you get around to saying that you're with Casa? So again, uh, and then that's where I throw the... the it's after you've told them you're from Salvador. Yes. What if they're not Salvadorian? You still start the rap the same way? Yeah. Because at the end, I mean, we are... Like, Sometimes a day you'll explain to me why you do that. 
Say again? Sometime this day, you'll explain to me why you do that. Okay. So, uh, and then I go and I do, uh, and I say, uh, I'm here to, from CASA, CASA in Action. And um, I talked a little bit about how we uh, are in Virginia, how we've been developing our, our, our self as uh, organization in Virginia, and why are we there? Like in this case. So what does this then sound like? Hmm? What does that sentence sound like? Hello, my name's Wade Rafty. I'm with ACORN. I've been talking to people in your neighborhood. A lot of people are saying, you know, so I'm just asking you for the first three or four sentences of your round. So you want me to continue? I know, I know your name. I know you're from Salvador. Uh -huh. You said you're with Casa Action. You're working in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And then I'm here because we wanted to know uh, if you are interested to join our organization, our movements. We are fighting a local level about the uh, uh, 280, 280, 270. Okay. <laughs> and we, yeah. Okay, so I don't want you to go farther because right now we're just talking about this first oh, the four elements. I'm going to introduce mm. the structure of your rap, and that has to do with the introduction. But so before that, when we set our heads to go into the doors, one of the things that we have to be very clear about as an organizer when you're door knocking is that you're talking to people. When you go to the door, there are two things in your mind. One is recruiting people into the organization. And the other, and I know this is going to surprise some of you, is making sure some people don't get into the organization. <laughs> Why am I saying that we're both trying to get people in and keep some people out? Why would all of you organize long enough to be able to handle this? Because some people are crazy out there. Some people uh, would not work. I mean, some people are whack. I mean, some people, you know, are, I mean, have, has, have, we're paid to make judgments as organizers on the doors about who might be a potential leader and therefore worth a second visit, who might be somebody who we should evaluate, who says they're coming to the meeting, has really come to the meeting and not come to the meeting, and who just won't fit into the organization. So how do you make that judgment about who not to invite, or how quickly to get out? Yeah. So I think that there's, um, there's also like, there's two elements that we're facing with CASA. Uh -huh. And that is that there are um, a lot of, there are a lot of members who are members but don't understand what the membership is. And there are members, there are activists who are fighting with us who are not members. So one of the first things I do when I'm on the door, when I do my rap is, I say, you know, hi, my name is Lydia. I work, I'm a community organizer with Casa. Have you ever heard of Casa before? And hear from the community member what they know of Casa to know if they know Casa services already or they've heard of Casa on the news. And then based off the feedback I get, kind of determine what's my next step in my rap. Okay. That's very important. Isn't it? I, mean, I don't want to get this confusing, but... We would always ask people if they've heard of Bitcoin. And we would be in a totally new country, a totally new city that we've never worked in. And what was the most common response you'd get when you say, have you heard of Casa? I think it depends on where I am. Because people have heard of us, but have misconceptions of us. I understand they have misconceptions, but <laughs> so it's don't, almost, don't almost everybody say, yeah, they've heard of Casa? Yeah, or, yeah you know what, I think. Because like I say, I mean, I've been in places where there's no right. earthly way everybody, anybody would have ever heard of acorn. And almost every time when I say, well, you've heard of acorn, we've been, yeah, yeah, you know, I think I have heard of acorn. And they all, you know, because they, they want to, they want to have heard of gossip. They want to, what is this gossip? They, they, you know, people deal with you from aspirations. They would like to know. They, they think maybe I should have heard of gossip. So this is always one of the most affirmative ways you can start talking to people because you start with the process of people in this dialectic of organizing who are responding positively. Yeah, yeah, I think I have heard of gossip. Now, yeah, they have no understanding what gossip is. Well, I ask them what have they heard, like make them talk. Oh, you really get into yeah. the stuff. Okay. I say, what have you heard of Casa? And if I'm close to the office, they'll tell me about a service or coming through the door. And then I transition into just movement rather than the services. If they've 
said they'd come to a meeting, then I'd ask them, you know, what do you think about the meeting? So I get them talking before I do any farther ask. Okay, so I think that's probably possible for you because your experience, but I think it's a dangerous thing to start asking people what they've heard of CASA because they may have heard positive, negative, it may be totally, you're already, you're trying to reshape people before you get to the persuasion part of your rap. Uh, so it works for you because you can probably make anything work at this point, but it may not be for people who are newer to this work. It, it might get you going down a back alley that it's harder for you to come home from. Uh, so in the introduction, Obviously, you know, you're talking what your name is, and you're not part of an Alcoholic Anonymous group. So in that way, you're exactly correct. You're never giving, I'm Joe. Who's, who the frick is Joe? You're giving your whole name, because this is a sign of respect. It's, it's how they identify you. You're not part of a witness protection program. Um, you're willing to give your full name, and people want to know who you are. Remember. What, what's hardest for a lot of people to understand, when, particularly when you first start door knocking, is people are sort of scared about cold door knocking. Be on the other side of that door, I mean, it could be freaky stuff. I mean, it could be, oh my God, my mother told me not to do this. Here I am, naked to the world, hitting, you know, bare fist on wood at some strange door. Keep in mind, Everybody behind that door is more afraid of you walking, you hitting that door than you are of hitting that door. So you're looking to make people comfortable because they don't, I mean, people don't go from neighbor to neighbor anymore. People don't just, hey, can I, you know, you read these, you watch these TV shows in the 50s where people are going next door to borrow a cup of sugar. Who does that? Who, who borrows a cup of sugar? You know what? People don't know their neighbors. Anymore. Academic surveys determine that almost nobody knows anybody on their block. So here we are pushing water upstream. We're trying to convince people that we're all a community, that we're going to all work together. You know your neighbors. We want you to. Nobody knows anybody, so you have to understand that the people, you hit that door, and somebody on the other side is wondering, is looking through the curtain, they're wondering, should I open it, who is that, what is that, so make sure you're very clear who you are. And you say you're Joe or Jane or Maria, that's not helpful. They, they're not going to remember your name, you want to give them your name, and in my view, the reason I was going back and forth about Salvador is we're not there to build a personal relationship. We're not looking for friends. We're organizing people to be members of a group that's going to fight for power. So we want to immediately start imprinting the name of the organization because that's where we want the loyalty to go. That's what we want them to start identifying with is the organization. That's who we represent. It may come out later that we're, you know, yeah, the Maderos or whatever, that we're self or not, or whatever. They may ask us. There'll be personal interactions, but we want to make sure they know that we're possible. I, I don't agree so much about the personal relationship. It's something they bring attraction Thank you, buddy. I do actually... Well, we'll get to the whole end of this, and okay. then you can make your case. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll here's what I'll tell you right now. We're not building loyalty to you. We're building loyalty to the organization. So that's what... I, no. I have an, another thing because about that. To, to reinforce my compañera, you know... So what happens when you move from Lanchester to Harrisonburg? Or what happens when you move to Baltimore? So all of but the that's not the no organization. Ah, you say so, but why is that so if you're building relationships with you? No, what you're saying is that we don't establish a personal relationship. I'm, I'm saying, saying the relationship, the relationship becomes here. personal through the organization. So the first the organization has to be the primary. I agree with that. Okay, so we're going to say personal relationship. 
It's still though, it's still, you need to make them feel like you're one more. You're not selling anything. That's the problem. We form very deep relationships with people, but we want them to form those relationships through the prism of the organizational connection. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're just, and you're going to end up doing what you're comfortable with and what works. Mm -hmm. But, we'll come back to that. Okay, so you get to the introduction. How are you describing in Pennsylvania right now the new project? How are you describing what CASA is in Pennsylvania? Did you get it? No, no, no. I always go and say, I'm going so has there been any activity yet? The last one. Yeah, we have activity, but still, you know, it's Pennsylvania is like a, a really different uh, uh, area. I mean, a lot of people still don't know what Casa is, even though in the same city where we are sitting at. And so it is to me very important that I have to describe it like this. So there is also another Casa and another uh, agency or something that has the same name. So I, to me it's important that I have to specify who we are. And at, at what point do you tell them in the introduction that you're a membership organization? I do that um, at the end when I have to describe everything that we do for our community and how we also have incorporate services and then uh, we talk about the membership. Okay, I'm going to suggest that you at least mention, I'm going to get down you know, the wrong track again, but I'm going to need to at least mention very, very early in the introduction that we're a membership organization. I'll find you that. You're okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> And the only reason why I leave the membership part uh, after is because to me it's very important that they do believe in our organization before I ask, you know, about the membership. Because I'm not going to get into an argument with you, <laughs> but I'm going to disagree with you because it's, we want to imprint every possible time. You want to actually okay. recruit this person that we are a membership organization because if you don't hear that until the end, you think we're an advocacy group, you think we're a social services group, and then you're having to, you know, you're having to steer that truck around again to have them understand who we really are. So they may not understand when you say we're a membership organization, you know, of immigrants or whatever you're say, trying to empower, but hearing it, there's a, at my age, I had to take four years of high school Latin. <laughs> that was very, I don't know how valuable it was, but every class I would hear this one sentence. You know, repetitio est mater studiorum. Repetition is the mother of study. And the point, which is true in every language, is that the more we say something as part of what we've read, 
and our, the basic structure of our door knocking route, the more likely it is that it's going to embed listeners. Nobody hears the first couple of things you say. Yeah, and that's what we're here for, you know, to learn, to be more productive. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I'm going to suggest we, you know, put it in there somewhere that we're a membership organization because that's part of what makes CASA action different. <laughs> You know, that's always what made ACORN different. So we would always do exactly as you said, describe the organization, we're a membership organization, we're like a union in the community, da 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 da, -da and then go to the next part. So, is there anything else that people put in there in their ducks? I think, uh, depending on the organization, you know, we how the person then acts. Um, I might also share with them our last victory. If we've had a local victory, that has directly impacted them. And that is a perfect thing to put into the introduction when you're talking about having you heard of Castle. Yeah. Because they say, yeah, I think so. But what you probably heard about is when we just won like the blank. You probably heard that we were, you know, on the front page of, you know, the Harrisburg, you know, Gazette or whatever. You probably heard about us when we were at the immigration office by hand. You know, it gives you a way, once again, to talk about action. Organizational accomplishments, those things that are going to be part of why we ask them to join. In my intro, I normally ask them as well, I tell them why I'm on their right now. I ask them. Listen. Or, you know, like an example, for example. Yeah, I want you I to tell me why you're on my door. Yeah, like, hey! Uh, you were talking to neighbors about a like, minimum wage, Pennsylvania uh, has five an hour, and we want to know how folks are doing with that salary, what do you think about it? So in our structure, we always, because we're organizing that neighborhood, we would always say, my name is Mike Drafty, I'm with Acorn, I've been talking to people in the neighborhood, many people have said there are concerns about blank, blank, blank. Is this something that you've experienced or are there other issues you find? And that's how we bridge going into the second part of the most of the issues of the question. What we call engagement. And so this was the intro. Before we get into engagement, just, you're exactly right to bridge this. How long are you planning to be on this tour? What's the length of a CASA action visit? Yeah, how long are you going to be there? Oh, 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 maybe. Oh, so are you trying to get in, in the door or are you trying to stay on the porch? No. Are you trying to get inside? That depends on the situation. Because if it's a person who doesn't have any knowledge of what is the house, then you have to give them an explanation. And then you have to give them an explanation. Y luego después hay que dar el significado y la importancia de la membresía. Luego después de eso, eh, darle a conocer las luchas en las cuales estamos actualmente, las que... Y las uh, pasadas. No, 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 hoy, eso es cuando ya me abrió la puerta. <laughs> She said, this is when they already opened the door. But I want to know, are you asking to come in and visit, or are you staying out Are you inside the room? Did they let you in, or are you on the porch still? No, I'm just here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so this is when she's inside the room. So you are asking to come in and visit. So you are asking to come in and visit. So you are asking to come in and visit. Dependiendo, porque si, como digo usted, si yo veo una persona bien agradable y luego pero que no conoce de casa y que me, me ve, pues en su rostro se ve también, ¿me entiende? So you have to read the body language of the person, so you have to understand where they're at if they're going to be able to do that. Like if the person is interested in wants to get involved or not. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, here, here's what. You're always more effective if you're trying to recruit a member and sign people up if you're inside the door as opposed to if you're outside. That's just a universal law. I'm not saying you'll never sign somebody up on a porch. 
it's it's odds dramatically higher. So we would always have to come in and talk to them. Because once again, we're trying to make people comfortable. If they don't want us in, you're still going to run the rap. But if you can get in, and there are a million organizing tricks for how you can get in the door. Um, when I was 20 years old and started organizing welfare recipients, I had a clipboard that I used because we had benefits we were doing, and I would almost invariably drop the clipboard and my papers on the porch if I was having trouble in because they would open the door to help me, and boom, I'd be in there, and they'd be more comfortable because I was such a schlep. <laughs> I don't know how you translate schlep, but you know. Because I looked like I wasn't dangerous then. Then it was okay to let me in. When I was organizing welfare recipients, I was organizing, they were all AFDC mothers, they were all women with children. So you had to do what you know, but you could. But getting in the door is, you know, if you sense something might be uncomfortable for you, you don't go in the door. But if you sense that you're going to be more successful and it is a situation where you're comfortable physically and in another way, you want to see if you can be invited in. And you want to create an affirmative expectation that they'll invite you in. Now once you're in, how long are you in? How long is the business? When are you going to leave? What are you telling people? My transition to a one-on-one. Huh? It might transition to a one-on-one. Uh, I, don't, you know, I don't even know what you're saying. One-on-one? Uh, <laughs> one-on-one? Uh, well, How long? Is, it might you still ask the question, how long are you there on the door? What are you telling them that you're tired? Uh, if I make it when I'm coming in, I'm telling somebody I'm only here for X amount of time because they're busy, I appreciate that they've cooking dinner, I appreciate that they've got families, I appreciate that they have appointments. I know I'm just coming in off the road, so I'm telling people very clearly, I only want a minute. It's only going to take X number of minutes. And I'm trying to find out what that number of minutes you're saying, hopefully truthfully, is the visit. How many depends. visits you have? It depends. How many, how many depends how the conversation is going. Huh? Or depends how the conversation and the interaction Never is going. Never depends on the conversation. You're an organizer. Come on, bro. No, no, no. You make judgments. Come on, bro. You make really? judgments later, but you come in with you're trying to build. You're trying to build a relationship with your community. Wow. community has no, been you're suffering. you're trying to build an organization. You're not running for office there, are you? And I don't want to. Good. But uh, well, you're trying to... Let me ask a question. How many doors are you trying to... How many visits are you trying Numbers, to get in my personal, This is my personal opinion. Can, you, can I, I ask this question first, and then I'll ask your personal opinion? Okay. <laughs> how many doors are you trying, how many visits are you trying to make in that day when you go to the, the field? It depends on the day, but going back to your question, I think uh, 15 minutes is enough, and then we can say we're going to come back to you to follow up, because we want to go back to that person. I think that's the message that you want to send us. And, um, that's understandable. Now how long are you on the doors? How many hours are you going to be on the doors? We're going to, like I said, we What's the shift? How many, how many hours are you going to be going on? Two to three hours. So, two to three hours. I, on a week, I'm trying to organize a neighborhood in Falstaff. And we have a very specific project there. So every Thursday, I door knock for two hours between 3.30 and 5.30. Uh, my wrap is usually like less than five minutes. Um, depending if they're an African community member or Latinx member, if they're Latinx, then I'll talk to them a little bit more also about Casa and not just the project that we're trying to do multiracially there. Uh, if it happens to be a visit, then I try not to spend more than 30 minutes there. So, in a piece of turf, how big is that turf? How many thousands of homes? How many thousands of people are you trying to visit? I'm trying to find out what the discipline of the organizing project is. So if, if I'm trying to get in, in our organizing, <coughs> every day is four hours on the door. Monday through Friday, and then Saturday morning. So, and we expect 
that people will do 20 business. So we find the most productive visits are around 10 minutes. Now, that is not to say that you will never make a judgment that you've just found somebody amazing and you'll talk to them longer. Or that and we always know people who we think have leadership potential to do, as you said, a second visit. So you may just hit, do those 20 visits. It may take us hitting 50 doors to do those 20 visits. But we've got a lot of business we need to get done because we expect to sign up a certain number of members that day. And if we're only flip-flopping out there and talking to four or five people, the odds of signing people up are, are not so good. So 15 minutes is a pretty long time to talk to somebody. A half hour, I mean, you might as well ask to be adopted. I don't know what kind of personal relationship you're trying to build. Um, but, uh, someone wants to adopt you. Huh? That is so true, and some of them want to do a lot of other things with you too. But this is an organizational relationship in my in my world. No, you're not going to leave, brother. Keep it. I think what makes us unique is that we have the committee spaces, and so we're, we're driving community members to the committee spaces, and also have already developed leaders and activists who could do the membership pitch and hit in places that we might not be able to do at the door. So if we can get them, if we're not successful in the door with the membership, if we can get them in the door at a community, at a community meeting, then we're likely to be able to have so much more success producing memberships there. If we prioritize memberships at the community meetings and have a time where leaders are doing the pitch there as well. You don't want to prioritize one door. No, I think that we should, and I think that what is hearing us, I think we might need to dedicate space and time, and you know maybe a goal to be on the door a certain amount of times, prioritizing as well. We're going to go through the whole structure of this wrap, and it may be helpful to you. You're going to adapt the wrap to what's most comfortable with you. I'm in Philly tomorrow. I'm not I'm just here today. So, you know, I'm just whatever I, you know, you don't need to like me, not like me. I'm just telling you something that has worked. We like uh, organize millions of people. We so, love people. You know, y'all teach me. But what I'm doing is going to go through the structure of this rap. So, what I do encourage you to all come up with is a basic sense in your own mind how long you want to be in the inside of home as a normal procedure based on what your workload is. Because you don't want to come back to your supervisor and say, well, you know, I had free, you know, had one great visit and I only hit five doors. I mean, I don't know. No matter what you're saying about the committee structure, I assume you want things to get bigger. But if a minimum committee is 30, a great committee might be a couple hundred. I mean, am I wrong? I mean, you, we don't want to keep it small and precious. We want to build a mass organization. I, mean, I know when I was here 10 years ago, my, my scope was to help build a mass-based organization out of the social services program. And so now we have a mass base. We want it bigger and we want it more active. Here's the other thing that troubled me about you. When you say activists versus members, earlier somebody said something, I don't think it was you, about activists who weren't joining as members. I would be an activist and not join as a member. I want to put that somewhere here. There's something that's not connecting for me. Dues are so cheap. I don't know how they could be active and refuse to pay. Okay, so engagement is the section we're talking about. You helped me by talking laid out this. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to um, say that, like, I think that. We're talking about recruiting new members. Right? I mean, all of We're us. We're talking about everything that has to do with this visit, part of which is recruiting members. Right. I mean, I guess I'm just saying that that's a small part of our job as hustle organizers. Just uh, a, another big part of our job is um, developing leadership in the current members that we have, building their um, their leadership pushing them through their fears. We're only talking about 
one aspect. Right, but the it. one aspect we're talking about right now yeah. is the door knock. So, so yeah. Yeah. If you want to talk, exactly. we'll talk more about second business and right. other things. Second okay. business right. is where you're going to develop leadership. You're exactly. not, you just met somebody at 10 minutes on the door. If you're not going to exactly. meet them, say, Zach, I bet. Organization. Yes, we are. And, and you said, and you said, just you said that we need to mention that we are we are a membership organization because they might be that we are, are an advocacy organization or that we are a social organization. They might but, think you're an insurance agent. No, but they we are. They might think government. That, that's a problem. Yeah. That we are. We are a social organization, and we we advocate for union. So we we just not a membership organization. And for us, for me, personally, for me, the most important thing is to activate a person, not to set a membership. I want to sell a membership. I don't even know what you're talking I mean, about. Yeah, but, 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 but I think but, but if you see it as selling a membership, you already have problems with recruiting members. Got it. Got it. You want the wrong word. No, no. My main, it was my very helpful. My main, very purpose, helpful. my main purpose is to activate a person, to find a leader to bring somebody to our room. So you're confusing me, so why is that important to talk about the social services at the beginning of the round? No social services, social organization. And, and you're being paid to make judgments on a million things in that 10 minutes you're on the door. There is no substitute for good judgment. The reason you're being paid as an organizer by CASA is to make judgments about people you're meeting for the first time that you may be the only person that ever gets to talk to them. And because you may be the only person, you have to make sure you get it right. And that's what we're talking about, is how to listen to what you're hearing. So let's talk about engagement, which you are helping me with. So your example was you start throwing out examples of issues that the organization has been working on. And you want people to react to whether or not those issues resonate with them. So somebody says, gives you some response. And this is where the second part of the rap tends to be the longest because you're trying to engage them with the organization, usually around issues. And we do that around issues because we use issues in campaigns to build council, to build mass-based organizations. So, are the issues that you gave as examples, are they local to that piece of turf, or are they always larger? How, how do you handle all of us? So, I'll give you an example. I did that to you yesterday. That was uh, basically tied that issue to a local issue. Um, I basically just said, hey, um, you know, in July, your rent's going to raise to 900, and most people are going to do this. What? 900? Yeah, we're actually fighting, uh, since there's no rent control in the county, we're actually fighting it at a, at a, at a county level um, to make sure that it doesn't go up. And so at that point, it just kind of got their attention, but also trying to really make sure that the body is just a problem, but it's a bigger problem. It's a person that fight guilty, and you want to also pursue it. So that's what's kind of what's happening. See, the power of the being uh, a uh, member based organization and you know, the for the people run by the people and you know, give them power in order to solve it. Okay. Other examples of people who are using the example that you gave before, but for 15 minutes. Yeah, mine is a state issue. Um, the thing for Lydia because of the That would, you know, gather that. In this case, I'm going for the state issue. And how do you get people to respond? I normally, like, stop in the reality in Pennsylvania. We are the lowest in the area, receiving like 70 to 75 per hour. People don't know that information, so, like, you know, like, what do you think about it? So, they normally, people go, oh, well, I get 10 per hour. I'm like, well, actually, the new legislation says that everybody should get 12 right now. Uh, because if you get 755, we normally don't get it. Okay, so does that work? People follow what she's trying to do? She's basically all 
because we're listening, almost all of our engagement is trying to get people to engage with us, to give us a back and forth. So it doesn't really matter if she's right or wrong, it matters, is she getting response? So maybe she gets response on that, maybe, because we want people to be, we want them to respond to issues that we've thrown out, but we also want to hear if there are other issues. Now, in most cases, if you just say, you know, we're building community organizations, you say, do you have any issues in the neighborhood? You say that, you'd be amazed how many people say, no, not really. Even though, even though I could just walk through an abandoned schoolyard, there's a, a, a house that's, you know, falling down next door, you know, but all hell is breaking loose in these neighborhoods, and yet people say, yeah, no, I so, it helps to have specifics. It helps to say that there are other people who are talking about those issues. So to be able to, since I was giving the example before, to be able to say, you know, a lot of your neighbors are talking about, or other people in the community are saying that there's issues with housing, low wages, you know, rents going up. I mean, you're, you're looking to see what bait the fish will jump for, you know? What, where will people respond so that you can engage a conversation? Have that, and once you get the conversation, where do you bring the casa in? In our case. In your case, in <laughs> Pennsylvania. I said that we are actually uh, fighting to make sure that we receive the living wage in Pennsylvania, and um, because we have some action to make this place public. And is this, when you say we, are you saying we here, are you saying CASA is fighting? I say we as CASA is Maya. Okay, so what's my point, Carla? My point is, once again, you're framing this part of the conversation with the organization. Repetitio es not mater studior, right? CASA is, you know, CASA is fighting now to see about wages. CASA is now taking action about this. CASA, 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 CASA. So, it's not we, it's not me, it's not, it's CASA. All the way CASA, all the way, all the way. That's what we're, we're talking about, is them coming into an organization. Okay. So, what issues, uh, where are you now? Virginia. Tell me about what issues are involved in Virginia. Uh, we have. Are you taking notes, notes or what? Yeah, I'm taking okay. notes. A lot. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, uh, I just want to make sure you're not emailing, you know, a buddy. I'm not. <laughs> <I'm> not <laughs> <just kidding. laughs> uh, the different counties are diff diff different, but right now in Fairfax County, we are, uh, of course, uh, fighting. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> Oh, hi. hi, my name is Miguel, my name is Miguel and I'm from CASA. Oh, okay, CASA must be some sort of AA group. Well, do you know about, about CASA? Uh, maybe. We are an organization that is working for the immigrant rights, and right now we are fighting against trying to, to get the collaboration of the police and immigration in our country. Do you know about that? Oh, I don't want anything to do with the police, Miguel. Well, that is, that, that is the problem. Because we don't trust oh, in the police. Well, the problem with everybody. We don't, we don't trust in the police. Because we so are you're afraid. with a police support group? No, we are, we are not a police support group. But we'll, uh, we okay, want so you kind of went down a bad alley, right? <laughs> we want the police to be able to start this again, Miguel. We're being very hard. Those people are not happy. Oh, okay. So <laughs> sorry. we either want to learn how to do this better or not. You want to. No, I'm only really here for four hours. <laughs> My clock is ticking, so <laughs> let's try. Here, here's part of the problem. I'm not trying to be hard on Miguel, but all of us have habits like this organization. Sometimes those habits are not necessarily exactly the best for our future. But because we don't get to, we often door knock by ourselves or with one of the members when we're lucky. You don't have anybody who's been able to say, and we're going to spend some time in twos, so, you know, y'all could be easy on yourself. Hey, yeah, here's my money. Oh, well, hello, Miguel. Yeah, I want to join. You know, so y'all can really be that way. But with me, 
I'm just, Miguel, you've got real potential, so I just want you to make sure what you're doing is you're thinking about where your next step is. Remember, an organizer is the one who's always supposed to be a step or two ahead of you, not behind. Okay. There's 10 minutes left. Huh? There's 10 minutes left of. <laughs> okay. And I forgot to even tell people. Uh, We've been recording this whole time. So all of you, <laughs> mainly it's been focused on me, and, and so we can all go back on this later. Um, but thanks. When, it, when it's over, we'll, we'll plug it in. The other thing isn't working. Okay, so Miguel, I'm just trying to find out. Get to the issues. Okay. Get past the introduction. Engage me on the issues in Fairfax County. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're trying to uh, change or um, before you were so good. We're fighting. Yeah, That's, we're know, fighting. Being able to talk about fighting, struggle, those kind of action. We're words. fighting to end the collaboration of the police and immigration together, so we can restore the trust of, of you with the police. Oh, I'm liking that. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, I'm listening now. Because you know, I don't trust any of my bitches at all. Oh. I, I, I understand because... You know, why should you? Yeah. yeah. So that's why this collaboration with immigration is really important. And I want you to, to join us in this fight. Would you? <laughs> okay, you just jumped up. <laughs> And you know the members, You might want to ask it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and as you'll hear soon, we can talk a little about membership before we talk about anything. Okay, so engagement, other issues, other ways in which you get response on issues. So you're in a complicated piece of situation here. So what what is how are you handling the issues to engage people? Well, um, so to explain a bit more, we're part of a multiracial project that was um, established by a neighborhood association. Oh, excuse me. Well, I didn't know I was rapping here, I was just screaming. Oh, 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 My bad, okay. So, yeah. No. However you want to do it, I was like. Just do your rap, Gabby. Yeah, okay. give me your rap. I mean, know this was complicated before. Okay, so you're a community member in Falstaff. Hey. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Gabby Roque. I'm a community organizer from Casa. I'm just here getting to know the neighbors in the neighborhood. Have you heard about the FMOP project? What now? It's called the Falstaff Multiracial Organizing Project. What we do is we host multicultural events. Uh, we also bring orientations into the community. And there's a FIA association meeting every month. What's FIA? It's the Falstaff Neighborhood Association. And they meet monthly. So I just wanted to ask you uh, how you felt about living in the neighborhood. How long have you lived here in Falstaff? I mean, I just, rent was cheap, I just can't, you know, I don't know, I can't follow the initials you're using, so. Well, that's, you know, a lot of people actually do move in here because of the low prices and the rent, um, so you said that you are recently moved here? Yeah, about three months ago. Is there anything else that drew you to this neighborhood? I mean, is it a little closer to work? Right, it's super convenient. So I guess you might have noticed that in this neighborhood, we have, like, a lot of different Jewish residents. Latinx residents, um, and African-American immigrants, not immigrants, African-American people living here. And so how well would you say that you know your neighbors? I try to keep to myself. You know, trying to keep my kids out of the streets, and I'm just trying to get along. I hope nobody's been complaining to you about me or my family. I actually have heard a lot about this house in particular. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the thing Whoa. is that... Um, this would be an example of somebody you're leaving that group right now. You don't want me in that group. No, so, um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people feel that way, that they don't know their neighbors, and they'd rather keep to themselves. But I feel like, you know, in this time, especially under this administration, there are constant divisions based on race and hate, and what we want to do is just give people I try not to, I mean, I hear what you're saying, how you feel, but I try not, you know, I don't know, 
What you're really asking me is do I have problems with my landlord? Yes. How is your relationship with your landlord? I mean, see no evil, hear no evil, I mean, but they don't do anything. So I wouldn't pretend you're a Spanish person. Um, is your contract in English or Spanish? Yes. Okay, so if you have a problem, do you know what's in the contract that, what are the obligations your landlord has for you, or what I'm obligations you have for the because the rent is low. Exactly, and you know, that's how a lot of people feel, but it's your right to have a contract in your language that you understand, and this is something that we're trying to do. Yeah, that is actually some law. Nice, Gabby. So, all I would say is you want to get to that landlord issue and what rights are. Well, that usually is the first thing I do, but... Okay, well, good, because that's the first thing. She did so well. Yeah, she did, she did, she did. No? I think her confidence was still too much. Her confidence was still better. And how do you find out new issues that we're not working on? And remember, part of what your job is, the, the one thing that is key to every organizer is not your rap, but your ability to listen. So, how do you hear new issues? So, wages are a good example here. Landlords, you've got the way to start engaging people. How do you, where, at what point in the exchange do you get to other other issues you have? It's usually just like a follow-up question. Like, this is what I'm hearing. Is there anything else that you've dealt with? Or anything else that you're hearing from And person? how do you provoke more? How do I provoke more? How do you provoke more conversation to try to see if there are other issues? Do you bring up I mean, you have kids in school, in you know, more time for the other <coughs> How do you get that conversation going? Because if you, if you give people an open-ended question, they're not sure <coughs> The rare person will say, yeah, you know, I've really got a huge issue with blind. But a lot of times you're going to have to draw those issues out and hear if you see something new or hear something, a place where they're going that you didn't expect. So you need some, as part of your rap, you need some bridge question, some way to provoke or engage on those issues. Yeah. I think the questions are going to be based on, on the issue that you're dealing with. For example, when I was organizing about the driver's license in Virginia,